A lot of people are asking me, why do I keep talking about flow of like, what is so exciting about it? Um, I think this video is just going to be a fast way to give you an intro about why I love Floweth and the team so much. They are moving very quickly. Um, their uh, new agent, uh, it's called Neo. It's an infinite agent. It's one of the only ones that do does it to this level. Um, they released it like last week, so it's quite recent. And now it is available to all people. Like there was an invite code um, uh, kind of campaign thing last uh, week where they had to kind of slow down how many people were using it because uh, they were still getting everything ready. It's really good. It's ready now. Uh, so anyone can sign up. You don't have to wait anymore. And so that only happened um, a couple of hours ago. So today, this is just how to get started with Floweth and what does it do. So Floweth is... Um, it's actually got a lot of different things inside it. So we're just going to go through the different modes that it has here. So Floweth um, has a lot of LLMs built inside. So if we go on regular mode, you actually have access to all of these different models here. So it has GPT-4, the Deep Seeks, it's got 3.5 Haiku, um, it's got the new Gemini, it's got Grok Mini, and it's got Grok 3 at the bottom. And then we've got OpenAI, both O3 and um, 04. We've got GPT 4.1 and then we've got all of the Claude's, so 3.5, 3.7 and uh, 4, both of the 4 Sun and Opus. And it's got their own GLM um, 4 Plus one as well. And then you can also use Gemini 2.5, there's Flash and then there's the Pro one. So it's really good. You've got a lot of access to all these things and so we can even just um, ask here, um, when did Floweth Neo come out? So you like that. And let's ask... Um, yeah, let's see. I don't know if this is going to answer. So what we would have to do is we'd change regular. We would go to online search and let's have it answered by Gemini 2.5 Flash. And let's just start that. <clears throat> so the way that Floweth is different is what it actually does is um, it breaks it down a little bit different to the linear chats that you're used to. Um, but even here, it's like super visual. So it's going to look through here. And there we go. This is the answer. When did Flow of Neo come out? These are the real-time search results here. So it's looking on X. Wow, it's on TikTok. It's looking at all these different sites here based on real-time results. Uh, Gemini 2.5 Flash. There we go. And then it says Flow of Neo. Because this is not connected directly to the internet, it wasn't able to find it straight away. But then when we actually look and we use the online res um, search, let's see. There we go, Floweth 2.0. Okay, so it was on the 19th of the 5th. That is right. So, um, and then here is just like some images as well. So what I really like about this, um, that was the online search mode. So you can actually have different chats. You can use all of the different models here and you can use regular mode where you can just ask different things. Um, then there's uh, image and video. So there's a lot of models in here as well. You can use DALI, you can use um, both the Fluxes, Ideogram, Recraft, um, Kling 1.6, VO2 is in here. Um, we've got the new, like we've got the Kling V2, not 2.1 just yet. And then GPT image one is in here as well. So you can actually play around with a lot of these different image to video tools. So you just write what your prompt is, you choose what you want here and it will generate an image as well. And so the next one, is prompt enhanced, so you can use that if you're like still improving your prompting, this will actually uh, do an even better version of that for you. You can use comparison mode, and what this lets you do is you can select multiple models at once, and it will explode them into different branches and answer all of them at the same time. So if we say, what is the population of, why am I, even, why am I typing? So we're gonna use my ring uh, here. So what is the population of, let's say, um, Warsaw, Poland. And then we're going to press this and we're going to comparison. We're going to see um, across a lot of different ones. It's going to go here. So Gemini 2.5 uh, Flash, 3.5 Haiku. We've got Deep Seek and we've got G, um, GPT 4.1. So 1.8 million from GPT. 1.8. Ooh, pretty good on Deep Seek. 1.8 is Claude. And then also here it's 1.86. So Gemini 2.5 Flash probably using consensus data. Yeah. So you can actually use um, a lot. You can use comparison mode. You can see all of them next to each other. It's great. And so what we'll do is we're going to, like just how we did the, the data just then, we're going to use um, agent mode. So I'm going to show you that one as well. 
So if we go to here, you can actually turn on agent mode. So enable solving complex problems. So and autonomously, so it does it by itself. So if we said here, can you give me a comprehensive breakdown of the population and any consensus data that you have from uh, people in uh, Warsaw, Poland? So we'll go like that. We're going to turn on agent mode and then that changes like the models and stuff like that. We're going to change the output length. Let's make it pretty detailed and let's start. So what this is going to do now is it's going to create. So give me a comprehensive breakdown of the population, any consensus data that you have from people in Warsaw, Poland. And so what this is going to do now, the reason why I'm using um, Warsaw, Poland is because I was um, actually looking at a business clinic workshop that Chris Durr recently did. And I was looking through old transcripts. And so it was just the first city that um, came up in my mind because uh, I'm working on a couple of things with that right now. So what it's doing here is it's looking at the task and in real time, perform online searches to gather initial data. And it is, if we zoom out a little bit, look, PDF with statistics on Warsaw. So based on the provided results, here is a summary of Warsaw's demographic statistics, population density, age structure. There we go. So here is, uh, is performing online searches to gather initial data, analyze the results from the um, online searches. And so it's thinking of what it's going to do, generate a comprehensive document, detailing all sorts of things. So you just leave this. We can actually even, so if we go here and just close it, and then we close the last one, we refresh this. So let's go back. The tabs are closed. They're completely closed right now. But if we go here, Warsaw population, it's still going. So it does it by itself on the cloud and you can close it. So if we just completely close this whole thing now, I'm going to go over here on my phone. So we've got the flow of app here and Warsaw population. And here you can actually monitor the steps. It's actually doing it on online. So you can actually see what step it's up to. It says 12%. You can actually see what it's doing and then you can see the actual results as well. You can see it doing the, the task. That That's one of my favorite things. You can just let the agent do whatever it wants to. And so it will, like you give it a task, it will plan, it will figure out all the things that it needs to do and then it will do it in the cloud. So fantastic. And so the other thing that makes Float so exciting is they have something called the Knowledge Garden. And so in the Knowledge Garden here, you can actually, um, you can drop any of your, like if you have a second brain, you have PDFs, you have like books and stuff like that, like you want to study, you can actually drop them in here and make your own knowledge bases. And so for example, like I'll just show you, like, so this is Dave's Quantum Leap. This is mine right now. I actually have a lot of different psychrometric um, profiling on, on myself because I want to learn myself. So I actually did the principles you, I'm the entertainer. I did astrocartography, Myers-Briggs, neurolinguistic programming, meta programs, um, Ayurvedic dosha assessment for pillars. So I did Bartzi reading, language behavior profile, human design. I'm a manifester, wealth dynamics and grace model. So I did all these different psychrometric profiling on myself. You can put a PDF in here and it's got AI smart split. And so what that means is when you put it in, the AI intelligently analyzes the content, optimizes, so it splits it up into different portions and then it indexes it so it can find what's inside a lot easier. And so here it says it optimizes the splitting logic. It will filter out redundant information while maintaining the semantic integrity. So like what the meanings are, but the processing time was a bit longer, which is fine. So you just let it do the AI smart split. You drop whatever you want in here. And then that is now Dave's quantum leap. So if we close this, we can go here, turn off agent mode, just have a bit of a chat. Um, what are the top um, five best traits of Dave? Let's just um, say Dave Katagi. So then we will turn on the knowledge base and we are going to use Dave's quantum leap and then go here, let's use whisper. So we're gonna go, uh, please use some of the best psychrometric data and find like the cross references between all of the different psychrometric tests um, and then just find the top um, five best traits. Yes, let's do that. So um, we're going to use the knowledge um, garden, the knowledge base, but quantum leap. And let's use, um, yeah, let's use Gemini 2.5 and let's start. So this is not an agent. This is still using the chatting mode. But as you can see over here, there's 36 seeds 
and it will look through all of the ones that have been indexed in the quantum leap. It's going to use seven seeds here. So in stress and relaxation, type three. So that's using um, the, which one is that? So that's using the um, Enneagram profile. There's neurolinguistic profiling, my high five, and then principles, you neurolinguistic profile. And then see it. so here, it actually went through like all of those different files and it found the most relevant and useful. And it actually broke down achievement oriented pattern recognition, and then here, adaptable and flexible, empathic leadership, and then self-confident, self-believer, autonomous. So it actually looked through and you can see which seeds it used. This is so exciting because it used to be like, even if you're using Claude right now, if you use Claude and you put a couple of um, PDFs in there and they're pretty big, after a while, the conversation will end because it has to read to the top of the conversation down and then... After a while, you, you can't actually access like that um, conversation anymore. The difference between what is happening here is um, the seeds, it will only find the most relevant seeds, which already has indexed. So it will look through the right ones and then it will answer the question based on what is relevant to what you were asking. So um, you can ask uh, like different questions about things in the same um, knowledge base and it will find the things that are most relevant to what is um, you, like related to your question. And so this is so, so exciting because they're so generous that um, in the knowledge garden, you can actually, so if we go here, every user gets 10 million tokens to store all of their knowledge bases. So even here, Enneagram 3, High 5, My Skills and Capabilities, How to Get Rich Without Getting Lucky from Naval. So in here, I'm only using, I'm not even using like, uh, I'm using around 5% of my 10 million tokens. I hope that math is right, but yes. <laughs> like this is insane, like how much you can actually put in here. I, I have not even like really started putting lots of knowledge bases in here just yet, because I've only been using it a few days. but. Being able to put this much information in here, it automatically uses AI to split them into seeds. And then when you ask things, it will look through it semantically for what's relevant based on your um, your request. It will answer it. And the thing is, you don't have to just use that one. We can turn and toggle different ones at different times. So if we go Steve Jobs, and then we have My Quantum Leap, and then uh, Paul Graham Essays, and then we use the remote again with Whisperflow. Um, Knowing uh, Steve Jobs' mind, uh, Dave's strengths, um, and then looking at the uh, Paul Graham essays, what do you think are uh, three different strategies Dave can use for uh, making content that shows his personality, understands the thinking and mindset behind Steve Jobs and his approach to things, and using um, the essays um, to show different um, three different approaches to frame that message? So... I'm just going to use that and we're going to use Gemini 2.5 flash and it's going to look at now Steve Jobs's speeches, um, the essays as well, and my seeds. So it's looking at 620 seeds and it's going to choose the ones most relevant to what I asked using Gemini 2.5. So it's defining content strategies. They integrate with Steve Jobs. So it's showing the reasoning process here. And it's using 2.5 based on the information provided in your personal knowledge base about Steve Jobs. Here are three different strategies Dave can use for creating content that shows his personality, reflects Steve Jobs thinking and frames the messages using the themes from the provided text. So craftsmanship and attention to detailed narrative. Ooh, that's pretty good. Strategy, the people, passion and shared mission. So it's actually going um, and using Steve's um, speeches how it incorporates his mindset, how I can show personality, strategy, the connecting the dots and trusting intuition. All oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> we connect the dots looking forward, um, uh, uh, looking backwards, not forwards. So we used 13 different seeds. Like th that's probably like an improvement I could have done on that, um, that initial prompt, but just being able to see that the knowledge base uses the relevant data. And this is, this is just like brainstorming ideas. You could actually say, could you think of what we could do for social media content? Like, can you give me some ideas for writing an email? Like, this is just me like playing around with it, but you can actually connect multiple knowledge bases and make sure you articulate which ones you can't just, you don't just click them and expect it to know. You would say, I want you to use this knowledge base. You click it, you turn it on and you direct its attention towards those as well. You can actually uh, really focus on what you want it to do. And so 
um, because you can put up to 10 million um, tokens um, of like knowledge in here, this, this will essentially be another form of building a second brain because it understands um, and it's like semantically broke them, um, broke them down with AI. You can actually uh, organize a lot of your stuff a lot easier and you just toggle them on based on what you're doing. So this is an incredible way to use um, PDFs instead of them just being there and you just drop it in and then you're making the LLM do all of the work. Um, it being broken up, it's actually removing all of the irrelevant stuff and it's making it more targeted and specific. So it's very exciting. This is, this is actually, the agent is very, very impressive, but equally as impressive is the knowledge garden because you can use the knowledge garden and the agent at the same time. So that's, that's like even more exciting as well. They are both equally separately exciting, but then if we go on agent mode, you can turn on the knowledge base when you're building agents as well. So this whole thing, I've created so many insane workflows now um, because there's some things that I made that were GPTs before. And then I was like, oh, are they not going to make the marketplace? Okay, well then I don't really need it to be on, on that anymore. So I actually took a lot of the GPTs that I was doing. I took them out. And I turned them into PDFs that you could just drop into any LLM. So it doesn't need chat anymore. Um, chat's great. I love the advanced voice mode. There's all these different reasons why I like all these other LLMs. But the GPTs I found quite restrictive because um, there's so many other things that the other LLMs do as well. So I actually made the instructions that were previously in a GPT. But now you can drop it in Grok. And it has like search and internet and everything as well. You can put it in um, Claude. Claude can read the internet and so can Gemini. So um, I actually removed the processes. I turned them into PDFs and inside the PDFs, I put the prompt inside the PDF and then now you can just drop it into Floweth and Floweth in agent mode will create that by itself. It will do it. So a lot of the other ones that I was doing like PDFs, I had a lot of PDFs that would do specific functions um, that mimicked a uh, GPT, but now it can do it itself and you can target it at this, like um, this website. I want to like figure out a marketing plan or I want to uh, make some email outreach to this, uh, this company in particular. I want to do like an analysis of their website or I want uh, this website to, I want to maybe do like an order of their messaging so I can help fix their messaging or something like that. You can get, Floweth to do it and then present it as a website that is deployed online as well. So Floweth doesn't just make documents. It's not just making documents. It can also make live deployed websites, which you can send to prospects or to clients. Um, you can make it make a website that is shareable live and works and interactive. And so it's so exciting what is possible with Floweth now. Um, I'm still finding a lot more use cases and I'll share them in um, upcoming videos, but there's no need for invites anymore. So um, yeah, have a, have a bit of a go. It's very fun and we can build so many things now. It's so much fun. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.